Hi, check out what I found in the dumpster and it has not been widerized to prevent the uh, robot uprising and uh, can't risk having this thing become self-aware in the dumpster. We're going to tear this thing down so that uh, Skynet, aka uh, Samsung, can't uh, go rogue on us. Model SR8980 running Windows CE Core 5.0. Thank you very much. Yeah, one of these uh, robot cleanery things. Let us know if you actually use one of these things. So it's got like spinny spinny things here. It's got wheelie wheelie things here that spin. And these uh, these rubber wheels, they actually found, they feel very compliant. Actually, I'm really liking the spring in that. But uh, yeah, so we've got the bristles here. It um, sucks it up. We just got a uh, little uh, non-driven wheel at the back there. Secret, oh, secret hidden on off switch. Look, does it actually do anything? Oh, I don't know. I'm, it's okay. Got the wideriser standing by. Nope. And it's got two charging pads here. So I guess it uh, goes back to base unit and uh, charges up. Three things, probably there's, there's a window there. Is that, is that infrared? Um, yeah, it's got all sensory. I don't know. Sensory things? I got no idea. Um, it does actually have a spy camera on top because it's got to uh, watch uh, the humans. Is uh, Here's the little uh, uh, dust um, containment thing. It's not very big, but uh, it's got a filter in there. None of that uh, HEPA rubbish. Is that a... No, I thought that was some sort of micro switchy thing. And um, yeah, so it sucks it in through here. Um, so the pump will be up in there somewhere. It's got some rubber baby buggy bumpers around here. Is it? Yeah, it's kind of rubbery. Let's tear it down so it can't become self-aware. Let's gut this sucker. So yes, don't just throw these out in the dumpster without widerizing them first because Sarah Connor's getting pretty old these days. Can't count on her and you can't count on the future, so we've got to do what we can here and now to stop the uprising. I've uh, planned ahead. I, I do own a bunker, so that's going to help. Highly recommend it. Don't leave these things to breed and become self-aware. And don't be fooled by their innocent appearance and functionality. Let's have a look. Ah, oh, there you go. There's the battery. It's got two connections there. 31.7 watt hours. And you can't just rely on taking out the batteries either to stop the robots. You don't know what sort of hidden power source they've got in them. Interestingly, that pack looks openable. All right, might try that later. It's got a USB port down there for the Skynet update. And I'll tell you what, the uh, Cyberdyne division of Samsung have really built this like a brick dunny. It's not going to come apart without a fight. Got these interesting looking rubber plugs here. Is that some sort of thing holding this in? Because I can't get this uh, played out. wonder if the rubber baby buggy bumper just comes off. Oh yeah, looks like it might. Well, it deserved it. That had a flat flex in it. What was under there? That's really interesting. What is that? That's not, neither of those are a transparent window. Front rubber baby buggy bumper, that just comes off. I don't know, some heat studs or something? There you go, that's the human detector strip <laughs> right around there. I, I don't know, I might have to get those under the microscope. Yeah, they're obviously uh, not uh, visual because you're not going to penetrate the rubber there. Uh, I did manage to lever out one of the wheels. That's your motor, check that out. Isn't that groovy? I'm going to keep that mechanism. That's that's really neat. Got to be able to do something with that. Have a fun project with that. And exactly the same on the other side there. Yeah, interesting uh, split arrangement like that. Obviously a reduction gear mechanism in there. Yeah, that's obviously an encoder wheel. I think there's going to be two magnets either side and then hall sensors either side there. I'm not sure if that's a uh, user, uh, like, uh, replaceable and cleanable, but uh, yeah, you can certainly... Certainly do it, and more screws, here we go. I still don't trust it. I've got my uh, widerizer ready, at the ready. You never know when it's gonna come back. Oh, another, they love using these uh, PCB interconnects like that. Beautiful custom moldings, and then they just slip in there 
and screwed in with the board to board interconnects no wiring so there we go they got a uh, belt in there motor's going to be in here yeah that is a pcb mount motor there you can see the tabs either side and another one of those uh encoding wheels on top as well so it looks like we're going to score a uh, few decent motors out of this puppy it's gonna, yeah slides off look at that i are transparent that looks i are transparent yeah you betcha so these are uh optical pointing inwards oh is that a, a detection like a dust so either that's a photo transmitter and receiver over here to detect that you've plugged in the thing this or it's a wire yeah yeah it actually goes through no that's a dust uh way like a full sensor to detect um yeah so if light can get through then it's obviously not full if it can't get through then it's full so then it probably uh talks to your uh spy shoe phone does it is that a little programming header or something like that so you can access that from in there from you know without having to take it apart i suspect that might be a little pin which goes through there might be a micro switch in there so that's that you've actually uh, plugged it in we do have an infrared uh, receiver on either side or is it a transceiver and that's where it makes cute little beep beep noises to uh make you fond of oh isn't it so cute and uh yeah hide its real reason for existence and that little uh five sensor array there does seem to be separate from this one here so yeah they're both buggering off into there so I don't know why you'd have an extra little strip there. And that looks to be an optical infrared window. That's for the uh, brush that goes around there. So there's one on either side. So maybe that detects that the brush is, or maybe it detects dirt there at end, or I don't know, a uh, brush rotation. Yeah. And you can lever up these plastic strips here. Way there we go. Aha, uh -huh. oh yeah. Oh yeah, we're in. Look at that. Cyberdyne Systems Technology. That's a first. They've used RFI uh, conductive sponge there as the, the touch uh, contacts. That's interesting. Um, that's a nice reuse of a component that's normally used for, you know, uh, shielding to outside enclosures. Now I did find out who actually uh, developed this and uh, I'll put a photo up here. And uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm off to his house right now so there you have it there's the guts of this thing maybe you can't see that but i can actually spin the um impeller i didn't even see where it took the air from didn't see any vents on them don't recall seeing any vents on this thing got a bit of rust down there and there you go i was right about that uh, micro switch so that detects when you uh plug in the uh container on the front presumably an infrared uh transceiver it's got it's a four wire jobby got one on both sides there and that's just an interface board is it and more sensors there you go there's another one there and they got a pair like a stereo unit there there and there at different angles uh so that'd be matching on the other side would it yeah of course it is there you go and um, i don't know does this thing come with a remote infrared remote control is that our uh, cyberdyne processor there or no hang on there's the cyberdyne systems module there it is ah they can't hide it so telechips that's just a front company for cyberdyne systems who is a uh, wholly owned uh, subsidiary of the conglomerate of uh, samsung and the uh, world economic forum like everyone knows this like it's not a conspiracy at all and there you go there's those three touch sensors <laughs> just uh conductive adhesive those down to the pcb down there and um yeah they're the three that's how they extend the touch sensors i i love that reuse there that is fantastic so there you go there's one of our two uh motors for those little uh brush spinner things there they're not a direct uh connection it goes through some sort of reduction uh gear mechanism aha uh -huh, that thing on the top that's actually a lead there you go it's just a lead indicator more of those um infrared transceivers there another jobby here maybe that's for external comms or something that's you know it's probably not a user uh thing there's it's just got the uh that's just that swivel uh wheel 
there it doesn't do anything it's not powered it just swivels around our main processor there that's an nxp jobby and there's our little camera module on its own board there little castellated edges just uh you know a reflow soldered onto there so yeah tiny little module i don't know it's probably one of those little sony sensors they own most of the market they're all part of the conglomerate So they're the main boards in this thing. We've got our main uh, processor board here. These two are uh, motor drive boards. You can tell because they're getting physically connected over to the motors and uh, they've got some powery type uh, devices under there. Does that SMD there? Does that one have a, uh, yeah, there we go. There's some power stuff on the bottom there. So that's for the uh, bigger motor drive. Then our uh, sensor board here. And, whoa, we can have a look, whoa, what's that? What's that? Special Cyberdyne's can. Micro Infinity Cruise Core. Interesting. Anyway, you can see the huge sensor array all the way around that. Now, interestingly, this rusty bit we've got over here, this is just a weight. It's a uh, weight to balance out because on this side, we've got the motor for the brushes and that's got a certain weight and then that's going to like imbalance uh, the weight profile of this thing. So they need to balance you know, uh, balance it all out, so they've calculated what size weight they need, like steel weight, and they've whacked that in there. It doesn't matter if it rusts, of course. Um, yeah, you just need to balance it out. So that's nice attention to detail, and probably necessary um, from an, like a positional accuracy uh, point of view, because you can't you can't have like an imbalanced uh, robot and try and drive it around. The uh, the inbuilt uh, inertial measurement unit that we'll uh, take a look at, um, you know, internal gyroscope needs to know where it is, and if you you know if it's unbalanced and things aren't going right, all your little errors can like accumulate over time and it can eventually well not get back to its uh charging pod and well oh, oh sad face um it's just gonna run out of battery and it's just gonna help maybe it beeps and there's a little voice inside that goes help me pick me up charge me love me so there's your uh, impeller vacuum uh motor there and that's just um, mounted on a compliant rubber baby buggy bumper there so you know it minimizes our uh, vibration and everything else but yeah i don't know where the air i mean you know got some vents on the back of the but that battery compartment was sealed so yeah i don't know the air gets in somewhere it's all dust is all accumulated in there Ugh, lovely of course uh the filter in the uh element tries to keep that out but you know stuff's eventually going to get in there and for all you wheel drive aficionados there you go that's the mounting plate for it got a reduction gear train in there and there's our uh, spring that was well, was in there somehow. That was, uh, it felt really nice and uh, balanced. It was uh, quite well done. And can we get that out? For you motor aficionados, oh, made in China. Come on, Samsung, South Korea. Where's you know, show some national pride. You kidding me? And the exact same motor there is used in the uh, brush uh, driver either side. So yeah, we've got four of those jobbies. And this down here, is one of the cliff sensors and that will uh, detect whether or not it's going uh, whether or not there's a floor so that's some sort of looks like a you know like a little hall effect jobby but uh, uh, no sorry I thought that was the cliff sensor the cliff sensors in here and there's another one over here like this so obviously that board is doing some sort of uh, magnetic uh, sensing um, I don't know what um, maybe uh, like a homing Thing once it gets on the charge pad or something like that to know it's in the right spot perhaps all right let's take a look at these uh bumper sensors that are along the front you can see that they're little green dots there they're all in parallel and i measured the capacitance of these and uh they're only you know tens of puff so that's just the uh trace capacitance basically so they look like the membrane um touch sensors you can actually peel one away there you can see inside that yeah we just got uh two carbon pads there two conductive pads so because they're not like a uh tack they're, they're not tactile dome it's just a membrane switch array so yeah it's just <laughs> they make contact and and that's it so they're just 
an array of parallel membrane switches, but they're, you know, they're awfully small for the job. You can see that this, this strip in here is the one that I think pushes against these. So if the, you know, if the uh, robot hits any object, it deforms that and it's going to at least depress one of these. Hopefully, that's the idea. That's why they're all around that front sensor like that. So they probably just ma uh, manufacture them so they're a slight bit apart and uh, it doesn't take much pressure, I guess, to activate them and, and press them. But there, yeah, there you go. It's just a membrane switch. It doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. No worries. And if we have a squiz at that uh, cruise core from a company called uh, Micro Infinity, dates from uh, 2013, so, you know, it's near on a decade old now. Apparently this um, Samsung unit is like a top of the line unit, or it was back in the day. Anyway, this tells us uh, is a digital gyroscope and accelerometer used for measuring angular rates, heading angle, uh, orientation of yaw and accelerations under dynamic conditions, highly compact, light, fully self-contained uh, device, internally contains a MEMS gyroscope, a three-axis accelerometer, internal volt, because a gyroscope is different to a, an accelerometer, an inertial uh, gyroscope is what you actually want um, to get back to, like know it's like a starting location on the charging pad, go around autonomously and then make its way back. But you can't just do that, hence why it has the cameras. It's, I believe it's got like a, th that's why the camera points up, because it can see the uh, ceiling and you can get like the uh, corners, it can build up a map and it knows, you know, it can roughly knows where it is. That uh, prevents it from going on a complete walkabout um, and <laughs> not getting back there. So it's got, uh, yeah, signal processing, AD converter, risk micro, patented error corrected algorithm, an adaptive uh, reduced order Kalman filter, reduce the errors that affect this type of system, bias drift, uh, scale factor symmetry. Uh, as a result, it produces, well, usually a Kalman filter, um, they would use those in like modern autonomous cars and stuff like that to actually predict what objects are going to do, what objects in front of them are going to do, and stuff like that. But they are saying it reduces errors that affect uh, bias drift, scale factor, symmetry stuff. So I guess they're using it differently there. Hmm, interesting. Um, it, it takes a second boot up time to compute bias parameters and stuff like that. Does not require calibration after that. So there you go. It's an all-in-one unit. So if you find these in the dumpster, you've got a very cool, I don't know how much this... Uh, chip costs or a modern equivalent cost but you know that's a that could be a very fun thing to play with block diagram here so the sensors and ad uh signal processing in the kalman filter that or error correction filter so that all um yeah it's not actually doesn't seem to be predicting where object what objects are going to do moving objects because i guess there's only humans and pets and stuff walking around it's not too busy unlike an autonomous car which has everything, um, <laughs> including like light poles just jump out at you. There you go, very simple. It's just got an I2C C and a um, SBI interface. Geez, that might be interesting. I wonder if you could see anything if you took, if you decanned it. I'm not going to do that in this video, but leave it in the comments down below if you want me to try and somehow get the can off that sucker. This is a very limited application <laughs> note. I'm sure you could get more from them if you're. Uh, yeah, if you're Samsung. But there you go, that's inside an older um, top of the line Samsung robotic vacuum cleaner thingy. Uh, most interesting, they've you know, spared no expense. They haven't really penny pinched. Although that main NXP processor we saw there, that would be doing, uh, like that would be connecting to the camera and doing all that sort of thing. So all, you know, so Samsung value add a higher, lots of higher order uh, stuff and things like that and all the mapping, you know, so all the ceiling mapping and other roof mapping algorithms, but this is the heart of it, this uh, cruise core thing, which uh, contains the gyroscope and uh, accelerometer and Kalman filter and all that sort of magic. Anyway, it's interesting and yeah, if you find these in the dumpsters, you can get some cool uh, sensors and um, like uh, gyroscopes and, and, all, and motors and all sorts of things in this to have a play around with. Just put them in your junk bin and I don't know, you can hack something very neat with these kind of things. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that dumpster diving teardown. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. As always, discuss down below. And yes, do not throw these out. Widerize them or tear them down before you throw them out. We don't want them uprising. Catch you next time. Hello.